there's something sneaky about this crochet stitch pattern. It looks too simple. And yet, there is a really cool prominent line of V stitches that just seems to pop right out. With this pattern, we're going to be playing with stitch placement, where we are placing our crochet hook into the work to make our stitches. It simply fascinates me how many different ways that we can work a simple, basic crochet stitch. If nothing else, I hope that this pattern can open your eyes to that. I'm going to be calling this square the layered cake square to go in theme with another project that I'm working up, but I've seen the stitch being called ridges with half double crochets. If you have seen this stitch and know it as any other name, please let us know in the comment section below. I think it's fairly new and I was just really excited for us to play with it. There is a free version of the pattern that you can find on my blog which is located on my website crochetwithtiffany.com. I'll put a link to it in the description section below so that way all you have to do is click on it and it'll take you directly to the pattern. Next let's go over the materials. The materials that I'm using for this layered cake pattern for this particular square is Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash Merino Wool. It's this gorgeous purple color, oh my goodness, number 61 Grape Aid, and it's so soft. I absolutely love working with this stuff. It's a solid size three-weight yarn, so if you'd like to utilize something in your yarn stash or change the color or change the fiber, feel free to do so. The crochet hook that I'm using is a G6 or 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need the other usual things like the yarn needle, the scissors, a stitch marker to help you keep the sides of your work straight. I'm not necessarily utilizing it, but if it helps you, then please use it. And a tape measure to make sure that you're staying on gauge with this square. Go ahead and grab all of the materials that you are going to use and let's dive in. What's fun about the multiple stitch count requirement for this layered cake pattern is that it's any multiple stitch count number plus two for your turning chain to get onto row one. For this square that we're making, I'm going to begin by chaining 52 chains. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 51 and 52. Great. For row one, we're going to half double crochet in the third chain from our crochet hook. All right, that skipped first two chains do not count as a stitch. Just want to be clear about that. And then for row one, all we're doing is making one half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. We should end with two less stitches than you did in your foundation row. So for me, I started by chaining 52. For the end of row one, I should end with a total of 50 stitches. All right, I'll see you very soon. All right, coming to the end of row one. There we go. And this is what we'll be looking at at the end of row one, just one line of half double crochet stitches. Very pretty in and of itself. To move on to row two, we're gonna start by chaining two. One, two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, it's just literally our turning chain. Turn our work. Now to work this next stitch, it's actually called the ridges with half double crochets stitch. We're going to start by yarning over. For this stitch, we want to look at the V's on the top. See those V's? Come forward. You see kind of another row of V's here in the front. We want to find that loop that's on the bottom. Take our crochet hook, go from the bottom of it to the top, then yarn over, pull through. Got three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. What this does is it pushes that top V stitch forward on the other side and gives it a really cool look. So let's do that again. We're going to yarn over, go to the next stitch over, see the V-stitch on the top, move it forward, see the V-stitch on the front, find the bottom horizontal loop, take our crochet hook, go from the bottom of it up, then yarn over, pull through, three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. 
And that's all we're doing for the rest of row two. We're just gonna continue making these ridges with half double crochets. Again, finding that horizontal line just below the front loop only of that top V-stitch. If it helps, always refer to that top V-stitch. And then turn it, look at the front of your work, find the horizontal line just below the front loop of your V-stitch, yarn over from the bottom to the top, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through for the half double crochet. Once you get the idea of what you're doing, things speed up exponentially and you can move pretty fast with this stitch. Okay, I wanted to pop in here real quick while you're working through this row to check your form. How's your posture? Is your neck bent? Is your lower back pushed back? Are you taking on this curve-like shape? We need to fix this now before it starts to create aches and pains. Here's what you can do. You can either find a desk or a table where you can rest your arms on the top of it, or grab a bunch of throw pillows and wedge them around you, and then don't move, or grab your Velari pillow where it clasps in the back so it stays put. You can rest your arms on the top for a comfy, cozy experience, and it props you up so that way your neck is straight, your back is straight, no aches, no pains, no fuss. Great, you look much better. Now let's get back to this tutorial. Coming to the end of row two, last stitch. Awesome. Great. So this is what one side will look like when we finish row two. It's very flat, has a beautiful look that almost looks like a herringbone, close but not exactly. But look what happens on the other side of the work. Check this out. Whoa. That, the V stitches on the top all got pushed forward, creating this beautiful look right here. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. So what we're gonna do for the rest of this pattern is just repeat row two. That's it, until you reach the end or the length of the project that you desire. We start by chaining two and turning our work. Our chain two it never counts as a first stitch. And then we're gonna yarn over and do that ridge stitch. So find the V's on the top, push it forward, find that horizontal line right below the front loop, insert your crochet hook from the bottom up, then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. We're just repeating that stitch for the entire project. So once you get it down, once it gets comfortable for you, then it, this project flies, it really does. I hope you enjoy learning a new stitch placement and what it can do to your project. It is so, so cool. I do believe that this particular stitch will make a gorgeous blanket, whether it's a baby blanket or just a regular throw for an adult because it has the detail, it has the solidness where there are no holes for toes or fingers to get caught into. I do have a chart that I created just for you where I took this stitch and I figured out a couple different blanket sizes, their dimensions, how many chains you will need to chain to make that blanket, how many stitches will need to go in every row, about how many rows you're gonna need to meet that blanket dimension length, and approximately how much yarn you're going to need to have on hand to make the blanket that you desire to make. I hope you enjoy that chart and that you take this pattern and you have a blast making it its very own blanket project. I do have some fun finishing touches that you could add to the stitch to really complement it and make it pop if you do decide to make it into another project, whether it be a blanket or anything else. Because this stitch is very plain in a sense, it doesn't have a whole lot of crazy details going on that we want you to focus on, we can add some pizzazz to the border that we use. Utilizing fans and shells or something fancy and frilly like lace or something large and detailed. You could even go wide and bold or do something very simple along the edges but just play with different colors per row to really make the border 
pop, allow the border to grab your attention, and then you kind of focus your eye on, well, what's going on on the inner body of the project? This project could also benefit from pom-poms, using the exact same color we used on the inner body of the project, just having these small, pom-poms either on each of the four corners or putting a couple along the edges would be adorable. Super, super cute. I hope that you give this project, this pattern, a try. It is so much fun. It's one of those great relaxing projects where you can literally just work up this pattern while you're watching TV or a show or just trying to zone out and it gives you that zen, peaceful, relaxing project that you might be looking for. This square is also one of the squares in my crochet along sampler blanket project. If you have not seen that project yet, please go give it a peek. It's gonna be a blast, a lot of fun stitches for us to play with and try out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.